<laughs> okay. Um, also, I'm terrible at reading names, so please don't be offended. Bridget Dupa? Okay. How much research slash planning do you do for your books compared to letting the story come on its own as you wrote, write? And yeah, there's the second part, but we'll go for that first. Planning? Oh, I really try, okay, so in writing, there's this thing called, like, people ask if you're a plotter or a pantser, if you carefully, meticulously plan out your books, or if you just fly by the seat of your pants and just write it. So I used to be a pantser, and I tried to become a plotter and learn how to write outlines, and they were all terrible. And the sequel to this book, I had an outline, and I got 50,000 words in, and the book was awful, and I sent it to my agent, and I was like, I think this is awful. She's like, yeah, this is awful. <laughs> so I rewrote it from scratch without an outline, and now I don't have an outline again, and it's much better, so. Bridget, can you raise your hand? Bridget, raise your hand, Bridget. Bridget, please. I got a different breach book. So, um, I don't think I'll ever find like a process that works for, for me. I think it always has to work for the story. So the Divergent I didn't plan, um, and I wrote the scenes in the middle, and then I wrote back to the beginning, and then I filled in the gap between the middle and the beginning that I had left, and then I wrote the end, and then I filled in the gap there, and then I rewrote the end twice. <laughs> and then it doubled in size when I edited it. It's really crazy. Um, and then I after that I had to submit outlines for the other two books in the series because publishers, before they decide to commit to a series, would like to see where that series is going. Uh, shockingly. <laughs> uh, so I had to plan out Insurgent and Collegiate then, um, but the Insurgent outline I abandoned like almost immediately, um, but kept the general structure, and then Allegiant I planned out scene by scene and wrote from beginning to end. So for me, it's always different, um, and I think that's, that's one of my big pieces of advice for anyone who writes is that like, sometimes you don't have a process and you just have to try everything. Anything that helps you write is what you should do to write. Uh, so, yeah. So, try things. I'll answer this first since I'm holding the mic. Um, it was, it's the love interest in the second book who you see little pieces of in the first book because he's not human and I had to invent biology and also make him compelling as a person and that was really challenging and I like him even though he's not a good person he's not a person he's okay. <laughs> it works I promise he's, he's hot I don't know how or why <laughs> um, but um, yeah my favorite character oh man this is like a loaded question for me so um uh, and I have the obvious answer, which is Tristan Four are my favorite. Um, I have, there's a lot of, people, of characters who became more complicated as the series went, um, like Evelyn and Caleb are the significant examples, and Peter. So they're some of my favorite, but as far as like the entire process from beginning to end, my favorite characters to create, I mean, Tris is like, uh, just kind of like exploded into my brain and started doing crazy things. And um, one thing that, we were kind of touching on, we were talking about earlier, is that a lot of times, um, just in any media, women are kind of like the buzzkill, like the sensible buzzkill. Um, Tris is someone who just like does impulsive things a lot, and like for better or for worse, sometimes it works out really well, and it's for really good reasons, and she should trust her gut, and sometimes she's just like being, you know, she's overwhelmed with, with pain or grief, or, um, or she's just, you know, too, she doesn't know everything. So, um, I like, I just loved writing about a character who's totally different from me because I am meticulous and I am a buzzkill and I really have time. So, <laughs> she, it's true. Let's just embrace it. Um, and then four, uh, he was kind of like mysterious love interest man in the first book for me. And then as the series went on, his story became more and more compelling, which is probably why I wrote these short stories. Um, and taking away that like mysterious hot man element and making him into a human being was one of the great joys of writing these books. Um, and I don't know, it's, there's something great about writing a character who flourishes in adversity and um, who is able to kind of mend eventually. And uh, I don't know, he was, he was fun. I enjoyed it. I like writing, the end. <laughs> and editing after finishing your first act of a novel. Yeah.
Should I go first? Do you want me to go first? Okay, so I do the same thing every time um, with editing because I love to edit. I hate writing first draft, I find it excruciating because I really hate when things are imperfect and you just have to let them be that way. I'm like that person who puts things at right angles on their desk because it's just like, just make sure it's fixed. I think I was doing that with, we were signing these giant stacks of books earlier and I'm just like making sure they're in line even though they're just gonna get carried away. Um, Anyway, so I make a huge list of the problems in the draft, um, the ones I know about or the ones that I have had pointed out to me by critique partners, um, and I arrange them in order of the biggest, like, hatchet job, because <laughs> like sometimes you gotta chop a draft apart to make it work. Um, so I arrange it in, you know, the order of like biggest or most difficult to the easiest, and I work my way down the list. Um, pretty much every time that's worked for me. But I find that sometimes the bigger stuff makes the smaller stuff unnecessary. So that's why I read it that way. Also, my mom taught me that when something is scaring you, you should tackle it first. So, go, go, mom. <laughs> I, I want your mom to give me some writing advice. <laughs> um, like life advice. Yeah. So, so editing's interesting, I think, as published authors, because we get these edit letters. But even if you're not a published author, you might trade books with your friends, have beta readers, critique partners. Um, and so my first step after I get someone's edits or suggestions for my book is to go lie in bed and pull the covers up over my head and whine about it a little bit. And I think this is a vital part of the process. It's really important. Just let yourself be upset about it. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I write a book, it's always the best book that I've been able to write, and it's the best I've been able to make it. And then someone tells me to make it better, and I just find that temporarily paralyzing. But you know what? You whine about it for about 24 hours, and then you get out of bed, and you tackle it, and you challenge yourself. So, so let yourself be whiny, I guess. I also I whine. I didn't mean to make it sound like I don't whine. But I actually just get really mad. I get super mad. Even if it's like really awesome critique, I will be like mad at my house for like at least 24 hours. I'm just like, oh, I can't believe they didn't say that and they didn't understand what I meant and how could they not see all these details that were leading to this like really excellent thing that I had going on and then about like 24 hours later I'll be like, oh, because it wasn't. <laughs> 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 I think it is essential, yeah. I also think it's, if you get critique from other people, sometimes, uh, my, I had a professor in, I had a professor in college who said a lot of wise things, but one thing that uh, this one said is that if some people really love something and some people really hate something, there's probably something wrong with that thing. Um, even if you're like, oh, well, some people like are desperately in love with it, but it's like, but it's inspiring these like really strong polarizing emotions. So you need to look at what that is and like why. And I don't know if that's always true, but for me it has usually been true that things that people are really intense about in either direction need to be tweaked in some way, even if they're not changed or removed, um, that I need to think them through and think about how they're working in the draft. Make it intentional if, someone's, if people are paying a lot of attention. Yeah, so I also find it helpful, you know, in critique letters not to always to like look at exactly what they're saying, but to look at like kind of the area of what they're saying, because you don't have to apply the like fixes that other people think you should apply, you, but you can, but what they're pointing out is usually a problem. Um, or if it's not, you need to decide that it is not a problem that you're going to keep it. So that's other advice. Also, get people to critique your work, uh, who you trust. So I hope you didn't judge my vlog too badly. I know it was my first one and it wasn't the best, but I tried. So on to the giveaway portion of this video. I bought an extra copy of Four by Veronica Roth, signed, which I will show you. I plan on giving this away in a giveaway that will be happening right here. Um, this giveaway is going to be only uh, Canada and the United States because the shipping international is just so ridiculous. Canada Post already sucks enough and it's super expensive so I'll only be able to afford to send it to Canada or the United States. I am so sorry for the international people because I know truly how you feel. Most giveaways here on YouTube are only in the United States and being from Canada I'm considered international so I can't participate in more than half of them. So I know how you feel. I will be having another giveaway sometime soon and it will definitely be international probably through the book depository. So how do you win this baby? So first of all, you need to be subscribed to my channel. 
Second of all, you need to be, I think it's 18 years or older unless you have parental consent because I will be asking you for your address. And second of all, just leave a comment down below with the word enter somewhere in the comment and you will be entered to win. This giveaway will run from one week starting running from today, the 17th until the 24th, probably around four o'clock will probably close it but sometimes it'll be closed after four on the 24th of July so make sure you are subscribed you have parental consent if you're younger than 18 and leave a comment down below with the word enter in it and you will be entered to win this I will be um, posting an announcement video uh, before I contact anyone so look out for that probably the 24th or the 25th thanks for watching bye